Hello, good morning. Um, I've got loads to talk about today. Um, first of all, I'd like to backtrack to my last video where I showed you the beautiful Hannah Campbell. Um, I've had so many messages and emails about this sampler and about her being reproduced and I'm very pleased to say that um, Hannah has been started. I've been busy um, making a start on reproducing her and she's coming together beautifully. Um, the colours are just mouth-watering. It's really lovely to be working with this colour palette. Um, so she's going to be with my model stitcher as soon as I finish charting her. The model stitcher is very, very excited about this sampler. So um, look out for some sneak peeks in a month or so. Now the other sampler that I showed you, and I'm so delighted that loads of people love this sampler as much as I do, is Jane Hart, or Jane Heath. My husband and I have decided that she is probably Jane Hart, so that's how I'm going to refer to her. So, um, so many of you want to stitch this sampler. She is going into production and she will be a little gem. Although she looks like a big sampler, she's actually on huge, um, not huge, very, very low uh, count um, fabric. And um, she's not going to be very big at all when she's stitched on anything between 28 count and upwards. Now, the question is, would you like to stitch her with the front colours? or the back colours. Personally, I think that um, it would be lovely to reproduce Jane in the colours that the little girl actually chose. Um, that's what I think, but I want to hear what you would like. So um, I know I can't please everybody, but let's just see what the majority of needle workers uh, would like, front or back colours. Um, now, talking about colour, colour is a very, very funny thing. We all see colour differently and we can see colour differently in different lights ourselves. I know that when um, I was picking colours for uh, this house when we were refurbishing it we didn't actually live here we lived back in South Wales at the time and I would um, go shopping and pick up paint pots and fabric samples and when I brought them down here they looked a completely different colour we actually have um, very very good light here and that's why so many artists are attracted to Cornwall and particularly this area. <clears throat> we have very, very little pollution in the air. So um, light is able to pass through the air differently and light affects how we see colour. Now, um, we um, often have um, problems getting um, our booklets printed to show the true colour of a sampler. Now we can all see the colour of um, Jane Fiddis in the model. And my photographer spent a very, very long time uh, taking many different photographs of Jane in different lights so that he could capture her true to colour. But um, even so, when I looked at the photograph of Jane on my PC and on my iPad and on my phone and on his um, computer screen, they all looked slightly different. So we are working with um, not only trying to capture colour through the camera's lens, but for the colour to look right on your computer screen, which is impossible, and also to get the colour right with our printers. And um, we took three goes 
with our printer to get the colour right for Jane. But even then, so no, it took four goes because, yes, four goes, that is different to that one. Even so, we couldn't quite capture her beauty um, with the printers. But I do think that we have got fairly close, although the colours on the model are so much more vibrant than the photograph. You can never go by a photograph when you are um, trying to colour match something. So um, colour is a very difficult thing. And at the moment, in our Stitch Along group on Facebook, Jane Fiddy's Stitch Along, um, we're having lots and lots of conversations about colour. And the colour of thread will look different um, on back, different backgrounds um, and um, I put together um, some photographs of uh, DMC threads that had been photographed on cocoa and on corn tassel linen and the threads themselves look slightly different and also it's really hard to photograph the colour of linen. Let's have a look now at um, the original Jane. Now I'm going to be doing a video um, in a few weeks when the Stitch Along group has become established where we're going to look at Jane in great detail back and front. But let's just have a quick look at the original Jane. Well the one thing that you can see is that she's quite, you know, she's square and the model is rectangular and that's because this linen isn't even. Um, this is the front of the sampler and what I want you to have a look at here in particular are the birds. Can you see the birds look blue? And I've got the, uh, the birds with mauves and purples and that's because that's the colour that Jane chose to stitch her sampler. Colour is a very funny thing. And it's quite amazing how um, different dye colours change over the years. So this is the original Jane. So if I hold her back here, she's one colour. And if I move her in, look how the colour changes. See how the colour um, really rapidly changes as... I change the positioning and the light is catching differently and the white in the camera lens changes the colour. It's when I take the white out of the equation, the colour changes. You see that? It's always a good idea when you're trying to capture the colour of, a, of anything you photograph to have white in the background. That's um, why you can buy the light boxes to photograph things in. It's all pure white and that will enable you to capture the colour of things um, truer. I don't think you can ever capture um, colours completely true. Um, on camera. Right, um, so that's those little bits and bobs. Um, what news have I got? Well, I was tempted into a purchase. A friend of mine, um, Michelle Moulon White, um, Mill on the Floss Samplers, has just had a new release. And Michelle has um, made this release available via download and there's nothing like a little bit of instant retail therapy. Um, Michelle's company is Mill on the Floss Samplers and um, her latest release is EB1840 The Shepherdess. Now my printer it's on its last legs with my ink supplies so this photograph where I've printed it off is bleached out because I haven't got um, full capacity on my colour inks so what I'm going to do is insert a photograph um, into this video so you can see the colours better. EB 
Isn't she beautiful? I love these little samplers. Let's have a look and see what Michelle says about the sampler. Oh, um, it's 10 euros, so it's not expensive. It's a nice little treat. Uh, and I can't buy clothes at the moment because um, I'm too, I've put on too much weight. When I come out of isolation, there's going to be two of me the way I'm eating. Um, Michelle's um, website address is mill-on-the-floss-samplers.com mill-on-the-floss-samplers.com um, The um, download is in colour. I printed the front page in colour but because of my ink shortage I've printed the rest of it in black and white. Uh, but it's 12 pages, beautifully done. Um, Michelle gives the DMC colours and the Overa Soir d'Alger colours. And there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 colours. And let's have a look and see what the stitch count is. Um, here we go. Um, the stitch count is 248 stitches wide by 223 stitches long. So on 28 count, that's 17 and 3 quarters by 16 inches. That's the design area. And on 40 count, it's 12 and a half by 12. It's a real little sweetie pie, this sampler. And um, I'm going to enjoy having a good read of this little download uh, later today. Um, whether I stitch it, I don't know, because um, that's the one thing when you're designing for yourself, is you never have much time. But um, Michelle um, is a very, very dear friend of mine. And um, we met up years and years and years ago and in real life. And... Um, our other friend is Krista Gramer from Just Stitching Along. The three of us, we stitched together for a very long time. Um, we've supported each other through thick and thin, through happy times and bad times. We've laughed, we've cried together. And it's really strange because the three of us have gone on to reproduce samplers. Our shared love of needlework brought the three of us together and um, it's brought the three of us to all of you as well. So um, if you would like this little download, um, some instant retail therapy, uh, it's available on Michelle's website, Mill on the Floss Samplers. Okay, now I had a finish last night and um, I'm excited but I'm also a little bit apprehensive to show you this. This is the first time I've released my own design. And um, I've designed things before, but this is the first time I have released something uh, through Hands Across the Sea samplers that I've put together myself. And it's a sampler that's inspired by um, the samplers we love from the 1800s, but this is my own um, work. And um, I'm going to be releasing that as a little gem. Hopefully, um, not this Friday, next Friday, and I've got no idea what that date is at all. So if you're watching this video a few weeks ago, a few weeks in the future, <laughs> you won't know what date I was referring to. Um, do you know what? I really don't know what the date is today, so I can't work it out. Um, anyway, um, I, I'm not going to show you the sampler. You'll have to wait until I release her. But I just about, um, when I finished last night, I finalised um, my um, threads and did my conversions uh, to uh, Overa Soir d'Alger and um, to DMC. So my thread's are going back into storage now. I'll show you the colour palette. It's beautiful, really, really beautiful. Now, um, whoops, I wonder if I give that a white background. Will that change the colours? Really, really lovely. Anyway, um, I will be showing you my design and I hope that um, you like her. Um, just a little bit nervous, we shall see. We shall see whether she's a success or not. Anyway, um, 
as I've got this in my hand, I'm going to show you um, my silk storage units. Now, I've only got these in this one. Um, I've got lots and lots of these. Um, and this is where I keep my um, spools of 103. And um, you can fit a lot of spools um, into these um, little drawers, two, four, six, eight, ten, twenty, uh, twenty-one, you can fit, to, sorry, twenty-two spools per drawer. And I like them because they're see-through, you can pull them out, you can put them on your work area, and you can pop them away. These are um, sold uh, on Amazon, and uh, really they are just acrylic makeup storage units. I first saw these on a post on Facebook from somebody in America and um, I couldn't get the exact ones that you can get in America um, in this country but I found an alternative on Amazon. Um, so when, which country you live in will depend on what size you can get. But these are fabulous, I've got loads of them and they stack up on top of each other. Now that answers a question that I've been asked um, in the last couple of days and I've actually had quite a few um, emails in the last couple of days um, asking various questions and I thought that I would run through some of them with you. Um, if one person is, is um, curious about something, you can bet your bottom dollar somebody else is thinking about that as well. Um, and if you email me um, asking for help or some advice or you've got questions, um, whilst I might share the question and the answer on a video, I would never disclose a name. So it is in confidence when you write to me. Um, I had um, an email from a needle worker who is trying 103 for the first time. And um, of course, 103 is an Z twist or a Z twist rather than an S twist and that means that the thread handles differently and you have to be careful when you're stitching not to fight against the natural twist of the thread and it's all about how you put the needle through your fabric and then how you bring it back up. If you're twisting it the wrong way, you're going to get um, your thread tangled very, very quickly. And it's important that when you put your needle down, you pull it back through at the same angle. And when um, this lady asked me about this, it was really hard to answer the question without sitting down and stitching and actually analyzing what I do myself. It's a little bit like um, you can phone a telephone number automatically but you have to stop and think when you've got to uh, give somebody that number. Um, so I sat down and had just analysed what I did and I stitch two-handed and um, on a frame so as I put the needle down and I put it the other, other side I sort of take it that way and as I pull it I'm just twisting it slightly anti-clockwise and that stops my uh, thread twisting. Um, we all stitch differently. You might naturally put your needle down and take it through in the same angle which means you won't have a problem and you don't need to compensate. I find that I just have to compensate that little bit um, because of the angles I use. I'm probably not making much sense, but if you sit down and have a go and think about it and, and see how your thread is reacting as you're stitching, uh, you will understand it will all click into place. So if you're stitching with 103 and um, you find that your thread is twisting up, you are working against the natural twist of the of the thread. So you need to stop and analyse how you are um, handling the thread in the receiving hand as you pull your thread through and redirect it back up. Right, that's that one. Um, 
Embroidery hoops. Can you tell me what brand you use and do you take your piece out of it when you're not stitching? Yes, I always, always take my fabric out of my hoop or off off my frame but I slacken my frame take the tension off if I'm stitching with a hoop um, if I put my work down to go and have a cup of coffee go to the loo take a telephone call off pops the hoop it doesn't take long to put your fabric back on the hoop the hoops I like to use my most precious hoop is uh, an antique hoop and why this is so precious to me that this was given to me by a very very special friend a lady I love very very much and she went to a lot of trouble to find this hoop for me um, it's a vintage Queen's hoop and um, these are really hard to get hold of so um, when I stitch with this and I'm holding it, my friend is very much in my heart. Well, she's always in my heart, but she's very much in my heart when I have this in my hand. Basically, a queen hoop um, has a little inbuilt layer of felt and then um, it fits over and the tension is by tightening this little knob. And they're fabulous little hoops. They really, really are. Why? Uh, these uh you know years and years ago they stopped making these i don't know because they are brilliant but modern day hoops my absolute favorite is a hardwick manor hoop these hoops will last a lifetime and beyond these are so well made there's a really nice sturdy um screw so it doesn't matter um like me, I have very little feeling in my fingertips and I find things like this difficult, but because this is a nice size, I can easily operate um, this screw to tighten uh, the hoop. And um, what I like about these is the depth of them. Uh, they feel very comfortable in my hand. Um, I use the hoop when I'm stitching on the go. So I could stitch on a, uh, a plane for nine hours and your hand can get very, very stiff holding a, uh, a thinner hoop. These, uh, they sit in the hand so well um, that my hand doesn't get cramped. These are so well made. As these are used, um, they take on a really beautiful patina from the oils in your hand. So Hardwick Manor hoops are my favourite modern day hoops. And um, this week, um, in fact I think it was just last night, uh, Jean Lee from the Attic Needleworks posted a photograph of some goodies that she'd received in the post from Access Commodities. And in that box, there was a tiny little Hardwick Manor hoop, which I've got to get. That will be absolutely fabulous when you're working on a small, fine area, maybe an over one motif. Um, that's um, going to be put on order today from the Attic Needleworks. Um, some more questions. Let's have a look. Um, I'm new to working with silk thread for cross stitch. Have you created a video discussing the silk threads and linen fabric you use to recreate antique samplers? I live remotely in the USA and I don't have a shop nearby to glean information from as such and therefore I need to educate myself prior to purchasing silk. That was my problem when I first started. I was very isolated and there was nobody local for me to turn to for help. And um, when I found uh, the needlework community on social media, like when I first started, it was all blogging and then Facebook came along. It opened up my world and um, it's wonderful the wealth of knowledge that we all share between us and we learn from each other. Now, a lady who has so much knowledge about silk and linen and any thread is Kathy Ray of Needle in a Haystack. Kathy just has this um, wonderful font of knowledge. <clears throat> and um, it must, yes, it was last year 
Kathy and I did a video where Kathy shared her knowledge with us and it was floss tube number 62. If you would like to look back through my videos and watch that video it's a great one make yourself a cup of coffee because it does it is a long one but well worth watching let's have a look um oh yes um somebody was asking me about um led magnifier lights and i covered magnifying lights in flush tube 23 where I look at my everyday needlework tools so um, that one was there um, please tell me where I might purchase glasses like yours the one with all the bling I absolutely adore them these are my favourite pair of glasses and um, I discovered bling glasses from my friend Doris when we met up at a workshop and she told me that she had got hers from the attic needlework. So the very first time I visited the attic, I bought some. And since then, I've built up quite a collection of these in all different colours and all different strengths. Because I use different strengths depending on what kind of fabric I'm working on. Um, I particularly like these half moon ones because they can sit on the end of my nose and I can look at something uh, but I can also look up and see properly as well rather than keep on doing that. I did try um, bifocals and varifocals but they made me feel so nauseous and I did persevere for several weeks but I just couldn't get on with them so these work just fine. Um, the lady who makes them is Leah Benjamin Designs and I'm sure that there are lots of stores that um, stock these glasses um, and if there's any store owners watching why don't you put in the comments if you stock them so needle workers know that you do as well but otherwise Jean Lee at the Attic Needleworks has a wide range of these if you say to uh, her girls in the store, the ones that Nicola likes to wear, they will know which model um, you're referring to. Although I have these in all different um, colours. <laughs> um, oh right, yes, now this is a really, really good question. It's about Hanks of Overa Soir d'Alger. Hanks represent a very good value for money and if you're stitching um, a sampler such as a Bristol Orphanage sampler where you're using just one colour, um, Hanks work out so much better. A Hank is 45 metres but there are seven strands so that will give you 315, 315 metres. That Hank will go a long, long way. So uh, if you're going to stitch uh, one of our Bristols, whether it's Mary or Harriet uh, or Louisa, have a think about buying a Hank rather than individual schemes. Um, this is one for another day because that's quite in depth. Um, that's the one for another day because that's a very in-depth one. It'd be a video all by itself. Um, okay, so that covers some of the recent um, emails I've had asking me questions in the last few days. Um, oh, linen for Jane Fiddies. I stitched Jane on uh, Weeks Dye Works Weigart Base Straw, but in my video uh, when I released her and on my website, I'm saying that Coco would be um, a great choice for um, Jane. And uh, here is a piece of 46 count Coco. Now, with um, linen, different counts of linen take dye differently. So the um, lower the count of linen, the slightly, uh, it, 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 it will be a slightly different shade to this. So um, it's always great um, if you can go to a store and do a floss toss on a piece of linen in the store to pick your perfect linen. But um, that's one of the lovely things about using a, um, a brick and mortar store is that you know 
you have the facility to go in and do those floss tosses, but not all of us have a brick and mortar store um, close to us to do that. Um, in the Jane Fiddy's Stitch Along, we're having lots and lots of discussions at the moment about colour uh, and what uh, we're we going to use DMC, we're going to use silk, if so, what type of silk, what type of linen. And it reminds me, or not reminds me, but it makes me think about the little girls, Jane Fiddis and her classmates, when they were going to stitch their samplers. I bet you all those little girls in the classroom were chattering away, um, designing their samplers, because, you know, they, it's very unlikely they would have stitched stitch for stitch the needlework teacher's sampler. They would have had to put elements um, in their sampler that were personal to them. And you know, you can just imagine those little girls um, working out their design, then pulling all their colours uh, from, the, from the sort of box or the basket or drawer of um, threads that the needlework teacher had available uh, for them. Um, I think probably if they went to a fee-paying school, um, the uh, or like a little boarding school, that the school would have provided the linen and their parents would have been billed for it. Maybe if they went to a church school or a national school or you know a charity school, the needlework teacher may have provided the linen or maybe the linen they had was what their mother had available or what their parents could afford so they may not have all sat down with the same piece of linen uh, but you can just imagine those little girls and our stitch along for Jane Fiddis is just like that at the moment. Everybody's excited, they're kitting up, they're exploring the sampler. Um, it's great fun and I hope that you will be able to join us for the Jane Fiddis Stitch Along. I think we're going to have um, a really lovely time. It almost makes me want to stitch this sampler again. Anyway, um, I have to say goodbye to Jane today because um, there's a box waiting for her. Um, she's about to start her journey across the Atlantic and she will be with the Attic Needleworks um, very, very soon. And Mary395 will be with her. And um, as soon as lockdown is over, uh, the people who live around uh, Mesa, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Arizona will be able to pop in and see Jane for themselves. And, um, oh, can you see how that changed colour then? Isn't colour an odd thing? Um, see how that just takes the colour away? You just don't know from uh, the camera. Um, anyway, I've forgotten what I was saying, but I think it was um, you can pop in and see these samplers. Um, she is beautiful. I love this sampler. Um, and do you know what? I'm really sad because it's probably going to be a very, very long time before I can fly again. Um, with this pandemic, it really makes me very, very nervous about getting on a plane for a transatlantic flight. So it's goodbye to Jane today and hopefully I'll get to see her next year um, and hopefully it will be safe to travel then. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, stay well and bye-bye.